Hello and welcome to another episode of Industry Celebrities. My name is Kimberly Scott. Industry Celebrities is a podcast where I interview industry professionals in any industry and they share their passion about their industry plus a little advice to their younger self. If you want to tune in to other episodes, you can do so by going to thatkimberly.com. You prefer iTunes, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, YouTube, you name it. But now that I have that other way, I'm going to go ahead and introduce my guest, Mr. Darren Williams of Portico Property Management. Why, hello, Kimberly. Hi, Thank Darren. You. So good to be. This is my first podcast. Is it ever, ever, ever? Ever in my life. My son, I told him I was going to do one of these. He's like, is it going to be on YouTube? I'm like, I don't think so. Because if you're on YouTube when you're nine, you're a celebrity. Will so. you tell him you're a celebrity because, <laughs> because you're going to be on YouTube? I don't think he's going to believe me. <laughs> if, if I am, he's going to be flipped out. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. He's very excited about YouTube these days. Really? Because that's where he's learning all his great information. I think it's crazy. And I don't want to get off on a tangent. I know you have questions and stuff, but I was thinking, I was talking about this with our director of training the other day. Like, if you would have asked me 15 years ago, should we do training over video? I would have said no. Like, let's do it in person, and that's a big deal, right? And now, I mean, millennials and the younger group, that they check YouTube right away. It's the first thing they go mm -hmm. through. And so... It's just really changed everything. And so I watched my son. He looks everything up on YouTube, and he finds it, and then he does it. I'm yep. like, this is crazy. So There are families, kids that are making millions of dollars on yeah. just oh, I, how to whatever their toys are videos. I know. So Amazing. he watches one. I'm going to say his name because if I don't say Trevor's name, he's going to be mad. He watches. Shout out to Trevor. <laughs> uh, Evan Tube or something. And this kid just reviews toys, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of screaming in the background. The kids are like, oh, my God. And so I'm always like, turn it down a little bit. But, yeah, he loves it. He watches it. He wants to be a YouTube celebrity. That's not going to happen, but I'm not ready to break his heart just yet. Oh, so, you yeah. never know. He might come up with something that nobody's ever thought of to be put onto YouTube, and then I you mean, pop. You, I could retire. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Yeah, we're really rooting for that. Because you'd be managing just him <laughs> and not managing properties and people. Wow. I don't know which is worse or better. So, so yeah. Well, thank you for having me here, Kimberly, on my first podcast. Well, thank you for being on your very first podcast and exciting Trevor about being on YouTube because you will be on YouTube. I know. Tell the listeners a little bit about yourself, your background, and what industry you're in. Okay. So currently, I'll work backwards. We're in, uh, as you might have guessed from our name, property management. We manage, we buy some of uh, multifamily uh, apartments and we manage them. And so Portico has been around about seven and a half years, but I didn't come from this industry. So I started, went to Arizona State University, the Harvard of the West, as we <laughs> obviously not. I got my, got my MBA there and then I started in consulting, worked for Accenture. I don't know if you know them, but they're one of the big five consulting firms. It okay. used to be Anderson Consulting. Started there after 9-11, a lot of layoffs there and any sort of consulting work because yeah. you didn't get on planes anymore. So <laughs> then I started working in the resort industry. Arizona has a lot. I'm from Arizona originally. They have a lot of very high-end resorts in Scottsdale. I think you've been to a couple. Yes. I think you and I met. We did meet. The Biltmore? <laughs> yes. That's where we met. So we're very young. Yes. We're, we're very, very young, yes. yes very yes, young, absolutely. hip, and good looking. There's a reason this isn't on video though. So I actually worked at the Biltmore, so mm -hmm. went there, and so I didn't get to this industry in my kind of version 1.0. Yeah. I actually think that helped me. There's a lot of people, as you know, that grew up in this industry, I think that's fantastic, but, yeah. but I didn't, and mm -hmm. I think that helped because I came to the industry not knowing anything, and that's a downside. There's a learning curve, but I also had a very fresh set of eyes. Absolutely. Uh, coming from the resort industry where customer service is enormous. Yeah, enormous. number one. And I actually think that the biggest difference between, and I get a little dorky here, so I'm sorry, the biggest difference was with restaurants or a resort, you need repeat business. Yes. And so everything was measured. We had surveys. And if you weren't doing well on your surveys, you got cut. You had to. Yeah. Because if that person is leaving the Biltmore unhappy, they're not coming back. The dollars aren't coming back. Mm -hmm. Apartments aren't like that. We don't have repeat business. Yeah. We don't. I mean, somebody you should. Really, no, you really shouldn't because most people are going to either move okay. or buy a house. I mean, but, so they're not. But repeat business, like you don't want them to stay. I mean, I'm an apartment renter, so I'm speaking. 100% want them to stay. But by the time you move, a lot of people buy a house. Mm -hmm. A lot of people leave the area. Mm -hmm. And so very seldom are people leaving an apartment and then five years later going back to that same apartment. It's okay, just that it. life changes, right? Yeah, they get sure. kids, they need a new school zone, whatever it is. Yeah. And I think that was the biggest difference. When I got to apartments, I was shocked at how poor customer service was. And I think that was the key, Kimberly, is I think people didn't, they knew they weren't getting repeat business. So 
They didn't have to be. Not, a restaurant, again, if you're, if you're not happy, you're not coming back. Mm -hmm. And apartments, because they didn't have that, I think the customer service when I got here 12 years ago or whatever it was, mm -hmm. it was poor. Uh, really, everywhere I went, I just thought, this is so poor compared to restaurants and resorts and retail. Mm -hmm. And I think it was the lack of repeat business. But there's been some things that have changed, which has made it harder on apartments. And we'll get to that. Yeah. But that was the big deal. I came here and I was shocked and, um, you know, it gets its claws in you, this industry. So, so the apartment communities, they built and we built up the management company to about 14, 15 communities, 5,000 units, something yeah. like that. Until they sold to Camden. And they sold in 2011. Okay. Uh, and that's when you started yeah, Portico. Yeah. I, I still, you know, I tried to retire. Did you? Uh, I did. But... I wrote all my like my mortgage owner and everything. I said I retired. Please stop sending the bills. And they did. So they, no, they did. keep apparently Talk. they keep coming. So I had to figure something else out. Yeah. And, and starting your very own property management company was the solution. I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't mean to laugh out loud, but yeah, um, that is a tough in Dallas. Yeah, that is a tough business. You know, Kimberly, you know what I did is I looked around and said, "There's not enough property management companies in Dallas, Texas. They're really it's a small niche industry. They really need." one more is what I said. Is that what you told yourself? Was, I remember what I told you but I think I said you were crazy but yeah, it's yeah. Okay. You weren't the only one. Almost everybody I respected said what are you doing? And I said I'm trying to wreck my life. It's, it'll be fine. Uh, so yeah. So 2011 we started it and I think if I'm being honest, I've told you this before and even I didn't really think it would work. Right? I just was like let's try this because I I think at some point if you're an entrepreneur look you get the golden handcuffs a little. Yeah. You're at a company and you're making six figures and you've got kids in college and yes, insurance and correct paycheck comes every week or every every that's week right and so at some age and I, I that doesn't mean you couldn't but it means that all of a sudden people are going to look at you a little crazy and your kids are gonna say well I'm going to college or private school and I don't want you to do this and so at some age I think maybe the ship has sailed that doesn't mean you couldn't it just is a lot harder yes and I was at that just short of that age and so mm -hmm. I said well if I'm ever gonna do it it's now yeah and I don't want to say I thought <laughs> You've given me hell on this before, but I really, I thought I would try it. I knew what my run rate is. I could live about 15 months, mm -hmm. and then I thought I'd be out of money, and mm -hmm. I would go and be cheaper. <laughs> like, the people that wanted to hire me, I'd be like, well, I'm a lot, I'm a lot more affordable now yeah. because I need the job. I thought that's what would happen, but I still thought it would be a good life experience. I still wanted to do it, but yeah, I didn't think it would work <laughs> at all. And now, 2018, uh, seven years later, mm -hmm. and 200 employees, right? Yeah, somewhere around there. It depends on the day, right? Yeah. We, we sell property. <laughs> And people, yeah. Live, but yeah, it's right around 200. I always go by apartment communities, and I know yeah. you go by unit count. But so, what is that in a? We so our peak was this year. We mm -hmm. hit 34 properties. Congratulations! About seven, thanks. Yeah, <laughs> uh, about 7,600 units, and then we sold two the last month. So we're right around 32 and 7,200, somewhere around there. Okay, I mean, give or take. <laughs> give or take. Plus or minus. Somewhere. Yeah. And what would your ultimate goal be then uh, for Portico? It's a good question. I don't want to be enormous. Uh -huh. I think that 30,000 units, give or take, is about the right size. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think of some of the big, big companies in our industry, I don't want to name them. I think they're all they're good people, right? Mm -hmm. But at some size, they stop being as good as they could. Yeah. And they get too big. And I think that there's not enough talent in this industry. So regional directors, and, and every... For those of you that don't know multifamily, it's very similar to retail or restaurants. You have a regional that's over several managers, several properties. Each regional needs about six or seven properties. That's kind of their bandwidth. Mm -hmm. And you can overload them. Yeah, you Realistic. can overload them and then they do a shitty job and then you get fired and, it's, and then they hate you. Yeah. So we try to stay realistic. Like they get to six or seven, we're like, when are you a new regional? Because yeah. I don't, I want them to have, it's a little funny to say work-life balance because everybody works hard in this industry. Oh yeah, we do. But I think, you know, to be 300,000 units, which some of these big behemoths are, mm -hmm. you need 180, 200 good regionals. Mm -hmm. now, Kay Scott, <laughs> you've been peripheral to this industry. Do you know 200 good regionals? Be honest. Right now, I'm going to say, go find me 200. Can you, can you find them? No, but, but also... No, but what? No. Well, okay, so people that I have met in this industry, if they were regional, they're no longer regional anymore. They've moved up. Yeah, sure. And I don't keep track of titles, so that's a little hard for me. Are you trying to be uh, political? <laughs> don't be political. Name everyone, you, if all of them put them on a piece of paper, you wouldn't get to 200. That's well, my point. There's a okay. bell curve. And yeah. So I think what we've done well, and there's a whole list of things we've done poorly, <laughs> much longer list actually, yeah. 
is we've said no a lot. Uh, people have asked us to go to different markets. We've said no. If, if we can't be the best at it, we don't want to do it because yeah. I'm going to let you down, right? And so yeah. when they ask us to be in a market we're not in, and I say, I know you can find someone else, a lot of times they'll say, well, what do you think of this giant company that has... And my answer is always the same. If your regional is good and your manager's good, they do a great job. Yeah. And if not, they don't. Yeah. And so I don't believe any industry, anybody in our industry has not yet found the way to get 200 good regionals. And I don't think I can either. So mm -hmm. I kind of went at it backwards. When I started, I said, well, how many good regionals do I think I can find? Yeah. And my answer was like 12 to 15. And that kind of correlated, well, okay, 20 to 30,000 units. So that's where I want to be. We're not there yet. We're clipping along. Yeah. You always work that any number backwards. It makes a lot more sense. Yeah. I, I just say that knowing you personally, that you always look outside the box first yeah. <laughs> for recruitment. Am I right or am I wrong? I think a little, right? So, I mean, well, first because off. Because you can train them. I mean, you guys have. You, you can. Yeah. So, I think the way I describe the apartment industry is it's very simple. And when I say simple, it's simple to explain the difficulties in the execution. But it's not hard. It's not rocket science. I mean, if you do anything else, you can do this. I truly believe that if you're uh -huh. good at the, those core things. And so, I mean, we sell four walls and a roof and build a community. And we, it's, I mean, it's like the airline industry a little. We have this unit mm -hmm. and we got to sell it. So if you're good at another line of business, I'm almost certain you could be good at this. And mm -hmm. so when I first started Portico, I just stole all the people that used to work for me. And so the first couple of years was easy, right? <laughs> I don't I said, think it was stealing. I, I think they raised their head and said, yeah. yeah. I recruited them. And <laughs> yes. So I thought I was doing great because I was like, I'm kicking out because they were coming to join me. Well, then eventually I, bought, I hired them all. Yeah. So I think I'd rather bring from outside the industry. There's several good people I'd love, but yeah, truthfully, they grow up and they do well with their company yeah. and they move up. So it does get tough. They uh, eventually want your job. Oh, of course. Well, yeah. I, you know, listen, that's the idea. If you yeah. do it successfully, you know, you are hiring the next you. And, yeah. And you're, so that is the idea. I look for outside the industry. If you can run a restaurant, if you can run retail, you can do a part. If you can manage chaos. A hundred percent. And I, yeah, I mean, it's people, right? We're in the people business yes. right now. You mm -hmm. and I talked a little, and maybe we'll get to where it's headed in 20 years. But right now, we're a giant staffing agency. Yeah. If you went and bought a property today that was 300 units, you would need four people in the office probably and four people outside. That's eight people. So every property we have, that's eight people. And when you manage people, again, simple to explain. Mm -hmm. But that comes with all of the challenges, right? Yes. You know, are they doing well? And what's our performance plan? And how do we motivate them? And so, and then there's how do you keep up with them? How do you hold them accountable? And then there's 450 residents. Yes. Which also correct. And I'm the resident. I'm probably the perfect resident. I bet you, you are. know, but <laughs> I never complain. I pay my rent on time. You know, all that great stuff. But yeah, there's residents out there that don't pay their rent, and I'm always baffled when I talk to my friends in the industry yeah. to say, yeah, you know, people that walk on, you know, so you got to manage all that chaos. Look, managing people in any industry is the challenge <sighs> yeah. because people are diverse mm -hmm. and have their ups and downs. And all. I think the other thing this industry is, I mean, so this industry is really antiquated. You know that. Mm -hmm. It's kind of one of the last movers, right? It's right. the last technology mover typically. Yeah. The big ship that moves slow. I think so. Yeah. I think so. And so again, coming from different industries that helped me very quickly go, wait a minute, this is odd. Yeah. Now some of that stuff I had to learn. So, you didn't oh, have the apartment lingo down? Correct. And I said, oh, I get why that doesn't work. But I think one of the areas the industry has really struggled with and talent we'll talk about. But the other one is, is the first one I told you is the repeat business and they didn't really treat that. The other thing is that this is the most intimate purchase. Most of our, our customers are it's choosing a life to live yes. with us, yeah. Kimberly. I mean, they're not buying a t-shirt. They're not buying a latte. Yes. They live with us. They raise kids. They fall in love. They, they live, live here. Yeah, yeah. And so the shift that I tried to do with our company is that we need to treat them with the respect that entails. We're building a community that mm -hmm. they want to call home. Mm -hmm. And that is so much different than almost any other purchase you make in your, your life. year, yeah. in your life. It is. I mean, so... It's the most money you'll spend this year. Mm -hmm. Will you spend any more money than on a rent this year? Mm -mm. No, of course no. not. You even bought not even car. my car, yeah. Right. So you're going to spend a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You're going to live there. Mm -hmm. Our customer service should be centered around how special and important that is, and it should make it that way. And I think for the most of history in apartments, it hasn't been that way. Yeah. It's been, oh, uh, you know, roll your eyes. They need the garbage disposal is broken again. Yeah. Well, listen, asshole. There are, they live here. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's important. It's really important. Yeah. And so I think we've lagged in customer service for decades mm -hmm. and to our detriment. And yeah. I think we're getting better. Yes. I mean, and I know why though. That's social it. media is why, because it's put out, it's called, you know, Google website. Of course you want it, but like, what do you do with it? Where do you sure. put it? How do you advertise it? And, you know, internet changed the entire game for the industry, like where property management people, one, that were good at what they did were, you know, 
you put in the spotlight, and then those that were bad at what they did were also put in the spotlight. So, yeah. well, so a couple things, and you touched on something really important. So we actually talked about the state. We had a State of the Union. We do it about quarterly, although <clears throat> someone pointed out to me it had been a couple quarters since uh -oh. I had done one. Shame <laughs> on me. So we actually had our, all of our associates on a call today, and we're pretty passionate about this. And I told them that the Internet has, of course, I mean, shocker, the Internet has changed things. Of course it has. <laughs> it has given the consumer more power than they've ever had in the human history. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're touching on. Yes. Fifteen years ago, somebody was pissed off at your apartment and they left. Who'd they tell? Their mom? They told ten people. Their boyfriend? Yeah. Whoops. The, anybody I mean, that they could just reach out to right now. Right, which wasn't a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. Now, they can reach hundreds of thousands, if not millions yeah. of people, within minutes. Mm -hmm. And that has changed it. So that, where I said the apartment industry, didn't care as much as they should have because they didn't knew they didn't get repeat customers. Well, now even if they're not a repeat customer, what they are is an influencer. Correct. Right? Is that the correct correct technology? <laughs> you know, uh, the correct term. Kay Scott, uh, who's known me a long time, <laughs> is smiling because she knows I'm a grumpy old man and I don't know much about the internet. And so, <laughs> when I used influencer, she was like, ah, "He's been what? listening. He read something in fast." <laughs> no, your son is watching no a bunch shit. of influencers no, no on shit. YouTube. So, so I think that's changed everything, and so. I think it's a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. Consumers should have that kind of power. And you said something, and I know, I know where you were going with this, but I would slip back your hand if you worked with us and said that. Because what's happened is people, as soon as they get a negative review, they say, what you, oh, that's just that one person who's never happy. Incorrect. We cannot have that mindscape. We mm -hmm. can't. We have to have the mindset that, yes, if you have 450 people at your community, of course, one or two are always going to be somewhat upset no matter what. We yeah. get that. But if you do your job correctly, the vast majority are happy. Mm -hmm. And we... We survey our people every month. We mm -hmm. know, we can tell with pretty specific data how mm -hmm. happy or satisfied a community is. So we have two jobs. One is to fix the problems, even if that person's a pain in the ass or not. And we have to instill that mindset. Mm -hmm. As soon as we go, oh, then, then we've lost it because all of our people will never take feedback seriously. Mm -hmm. And they know in our group, I don't care if they're unreasonable or irrational or pain in the ass. Again, they've chosen a home here. We're going to fix it. Fix it, yeah. Period. That doesn't mean the customer's always right. I, yeah. When people say that, I laugh. I'm like, of course they're not. I mean, yeah. customers are wrong all the time. But you can still be respectful. Correct. And, and right. So that's, that's what I meant when I said that there's somebody that's always going to be angry. You still need to try and fix it yes. and not ignore it is my point. You know, don't ignore them. Correct. And you can't. Yeah. But the second thing is it's actually our job. Most people that are happy aren't going to take the time to do the survey or get on a purpose, that's right? That's very true. So whose job is it to go get them? It's our job. We can't just say, huh? we have bad ratings because only unhappy. And trust me, I have managers that tell me this all the time. And I said, I don't care. <laughs> it's our job to go ask the people that are happy. Mm -hmm. Now, I was at a restaurant, I don't remember which one, and the waitress at the end said she was great. She gave great service. The server was fantastic. And she said, you know, if you would, here's a survey at the end. I know you're busy, but this actually helps us in our bonuses and all sorts of things to get really good feedback, good, bad, or indifferent. Okay, Scott, I am i don't do anything. You know that. <laughs> I, 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 I focus on two three things every day, and that's all I do. <laughs> I went and did it because of the way she asked me. And so it's our job at the apartment level to say, hey, I know you're happy and everything, but good, bad, or indifferent, give us feedback. Yeah. And I remember when apartment ratings came out, and because you and I, we were coworkers or something, and I said, everybody's unhappy with it. One, it's not going away, so yeah. stick your head in the sand at your own peril. And two, companies spend millions of dollars to get this type of feedback. We're getting it for free. Yeah. Seriously. Not anymore, but yeah. <laughs> but at the time, it was free, oh, yeah. and this was a good red flag mechanism. Mm -hmm. You know, it's as you get higher up, and you know we've talked about this, eventually bad news stops finding its way to you. People mm -hmm. don't want to be the messenger, right? Yeah, they don't and want so to. Mm -hmm. As I've moved up in my career, I've had to think, well, how do I continue to get bad news because I can't fix it if I don't know it's a problem. Mm -hmm. Well, here comes a part of that you can just read it. Yeah. Like it's going to get to me unfiltered. Yeah. That's fantastic. So our challenges in industry and other industries have this is don't act like this is a pain in the ass. I hate apartment ratings. Say thank God for apartment ratings yeah. and Yelp and Google. Mm -hmm. And it, it's not going back. You can't stop progress. When's the last time you, you use Yelp and mm -hmm. you saw a restaurant with two stars and said, we got to go try that. Yeah, we don't do it that. It never happens. Yeah. So this is the new, and I think our- The only time I take that back is yeah. somebody that I know has tried it. Well, I usually don't look it up, but when I now, yeah, yeah, I yeah. search, it comes up. You know, sure. when I, I search on the map, they still, they'll yeah. still come up. But like, I'll still go because, you know, you or a friend or somebody in that neighborhood or that area has said, oh, you should go try it. It's great. I think moving to the review society or however you call it, the review era has been a titanic shift for most companies. Mm -hmm. I think it's hit apartments the most because they've had to change everything they've done. Before, they didn't really care if you were happy when you left because mm -hmm. 
you weren't going to tell a lot of people and you weren't really going to give them a lot of business. But yeah. now, changed completely. Yeah. We have Frisco, Texas. For those of you that are in Texas, is booming. Mm -hmm. You know, has tons of jobs. A lot of these jobs are coming from New York mm -hmm. or other cities. They can only afford one trip out here, not two. So they get online, they see which has the highest rating, and they say, I'm just going to move here. I haven't even seen it. They have mm. to. Right? Yeah. And so it has really changed. I think it's an exciting change. I think consumers, you out there listening, have more power than you've ever had before. It's, mm -hmm. a, good, it's a good time. It is. It's a good time to be in the uh, property management world. Yeah. And I'm an apartment renter. Yeah. I would prefer to stay most places, but when they don't treat me well or they don't care to ask me to stay, I don't stay. But yeah, I am conflicted in that sense because I come from the side of the business where I hear from my friends like you that, you know, that are from property manager all the way up. You know, it doesn't matter, you know, if you're a property manager or you're the president or CEO of the company, you get something you have to deal with as it relates to an apartment renter. And I, my heart breaks. I feel for them because I'm like, God, why can't just people be nice, you know? And then on the same time, I see that the people that I don't know, I see online apartment communities that maybe I have no connection with, I don't know anybody there, whatever, never worked with the company. And then how they treat the resident, you know, by just not even responding to whatever their complaint is. And I'm torn on both sides. So. I mean, I, I like to think most people are good, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's the negatives that we remember the most because they're, I hope so. I have to ask my standing question. What advice would you give your younger self in your 20s? All right. I think you told me something really a long time ago that was important, which is if it were easy, everybody would be doing it, right? Life's not easy. Nothing about life is easy. No matter what path you choose, you're going to have speed bumps and potholes and down days, you're going to skin your knee. Like it's just going to happen yeah. over and over and over but again. But that advice was related to business and now you're talking about life in general. I think it's both. Okay. I think it's both. But absolutely, it's yeah. business related. You know, life's not easy and so you have to have a resiliency. It doesn't mean you don't get down, but if you believe in what you're doing and you're passionate and you know you're on the path, you have to expect you're going to get sucker punched a couple times and you get up, you dust yourself off. Mm -hmm. I think I was telling you, my cousin was a Marine and he said, look, they, they had this mantra. The, the reason the Marines were the, the biggest badasses is they said, there's no quit. You don't allow yourself excuses. Mm -hmm. If we've got to get to the other side of the wall, we'll, get there. we're going to try to jump over it. And if we can't do that, we'll dig under it. And if we can't dig under it, we'll blow it up. But we're going to get to the other side. That is really what a successful business needs. And again, that doesn't mean ignore the challenges because they're there. Mm -hmm. You take a sober, wide-eyed look at that and say, okay, what are the challenges? But we're going to figure it out. Yeah. And to have that resiliency in business and in life, mm -hmm. I think is the most important. And that's what I want my son to have. I'm going to be honest, at nine, I'm not sure. We'll see. <laughs> He's just concerned with YouTube. He is. And I wasn't that resilient when I was nine either. So I think the best advice is to just... You can't quit ever, even mm -hmm. on the worst days. It's going to look bad, mm -hmm. but stay with your vision and keep moving. I think that's great advice. What advice would you give your younger self? Look at you reversing it in my 20s. I mean, well, <laughs> okay, I don't know about that. <laughs> this is a family show? Yeah, yeah. It's, you weren't ready for this, were you? No, I wasn't. <laughs> in my 20s, my advice to my younger self would be, it's all going to work out. Get back up and try again. Yeah, it's all going to work out. Do you still my answer? Well, kind of I did. But in my 30s, mm. be patient. Don't plan so much because it's not going to work out like you planned it <laughs> to work out. But it's going to work out. And you're going to be better for it, whatever it is. And you're going to get an experience from it. So be patient and enjoy the ride. In my 40s... That, well, those haven't come yet, yeah, so obviously. I'm in, well, I'm 45. I'm not scared to say that okay. now. <laughs> but yeah, I mean... I'm now at the half year marker, so I'm still sticking to the advice I guess that I'm giving my 30s just to continue to be patient. Thank you again, yeah. Darren Williams, for being on Industry Celebrities. I appreciate it. <laughs> and to everyone listening, remember, hit the subscribe button on whatever platform you're listening to, YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, go to thatkimberly.com to follow me on all the other channels, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, and so on. And until next week, uh, stay positive and keep growing. Thanks. All right. Thank you.